Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are going to be drawing and painting a pumpkin using watercolors. This is a really simple tutorial and it will teach you the basics of adding highlights and adding shadows to your watercolor paintings. Pumpkins have a really cool texture and shape which makes them a fun object to paint. There's a lot of different kinds of pumpkins. For this tutorial, I just chose to do a orange pumpkin, the classic pumpkin. If you wanna paint a bigger pumpkin, these techniques will work. Just make this shape a little bit bigger and your stem is probably going to be a little bit shorter. This is a great tutorial for beginners and great to just go over shading and adding highlights in watercolor. These are the supplies that you need. You need watercolor paper, watercolor paints, paint brushes, and I am going to be using this flat three quarter inch and this number eight round. You could use a number four, six, eight, or 10 round would work great. Of course, you can always just use whatever you have and that will be fine as well. Some paper towel, a scratch piece of paper, some paper towel, a scratch piece of paper, water, pencil and eraser for sketching, and some masking tape if you want to tape a border. This is of course optional and that's it. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is tape our borders and this is optional. The reason I like to do it is because it gives me an area that I can draw inside of. And I'm also going to be painting more of a square painting today. And if you don't have tape, you can draw a border. You don't have to have one either. Press the corners down. Now let's draw the pumpkin. I'm going to break this down into some simple steps. All pumpkins are shaped differently. This one that I'm working with in this photograph is actually more of a flat pumpkin instead of a round pumpkin. So mine looks like a squashed circle. So I wanna make sure I'm just leaving a little bit of space for my shadow, but I want my pumpkin to fill most of this space. So I'm just going to draw a circle that's kind of smashed. And you're going to wanna to draw really lightly for this part. I'm gonna draw a little bit darker just so you can see my lines. Then where your stem is, you want to just go ahead and add a circle to the top. So if your pumpkin is more like this, you're not gonna see it, but mine is a little bit tilted like this. And so we are going to be able to see that circle on the top. So draw a circle where your stem is going to come out of. Mine's a little bit to the left. And then just draw a tube coming out of that piece or a straw, and mine's kind of twisting so you can see kind of this top piece and then a little bit of this side piece, but it's curving kind of back in like that. The next thing we wanna do is divide the pumpkin up into those sections. These sections that really just make it look like a pumpkin. And what you're going to do is just draw across through the middle of the circle. You're going to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line making a cross or an X in the middle of the circle. And then you're going to draw diagonal lines through it. And then all you're going to do is just bring some lines out and you can curve them, of course. It helps if you're actually looking at a pumpkin. I'm gonna try to actually make these fit mine. Yours might be a little bit tilted. So I don't have one coming straight down right there, but maybe like this and from this side like this. So just curve them and don't worry, we'll work with the outside edges in just a second. All right, now let's really make this into the shape of our pumpkin. So my pumpkin is a little bit flat here. So I'm just gonna quickly adjust that. So it's flat here, comes up and around, and then it's not as wide on this side as I've made it because this is more of a flat pumpkin. Now, after you adjust the shape of your pumpkin, this part's really easy and it makes it look like that classic pumpkin shape. And you can exaggerate this a little bit if you'd like, but what you wanna do is kind of bump it in anywhere this touches the side. I'm just gonna either bump it in or tuck this piece behind it and bump it out. I'll show you right here, this might be a better section. So it's round and then this piece behind it bumps out. So I'm talking about this section right here. This is what really makes it look like that pumpkin. So right up here, I'm gonna bump this out. So I'm just like leaving a little space here and pulling this line in a little bit and tucking it behind the line that's in front of it. So let's try it over here. So we come up and then to get this section right here, we're just going to bump it in and then pull it out. And same thing with this section right here. I'm just gonna kind of bump it in and then move it over. All right, now I'm going to erase the lines inside the stem so you can see it. This shape right here is definitely not round. You can keep it round if you want. It's really up to you how you wanna do this part. Anywhere the stem meets your pumpkin, anywhere it touches with one of these lines for the sections, it kind of comes out a little bit. So it kind of drops down. And you gotta be careful because sometimes this can make it look a little bit like a tomato if you exaggerate this too much. Go ahead and take your eraser and erase some of those lines that we used to draw it with. And also what I like to indicate is kind of where the shadow is. I'm just going to draw this shadow underneath. 
it's kind of coming out in this direction and coming behind the pumpkin. Let's get our paint set up. All right, if you are left-handed, you wanna move all of this to the left side of your paper. If you're right-handed, you wanna move it to the right side. Grab your paints, your water, a paper towel, scratch piece of paper, grab your paint brushes. So you can set your flat brush aside. If you've never used watercolor before and you're new to Mr. Otter Studio, one technique that's really helpful is to make a puddle of paint to paint with. We need a big enough puddle of orange paint that we can cover this whole pumpkin with. And so I'm going to make an orange puddle in my tray and how I do that is by dropping water in my tray and then adding color. You can just mix red and yellow for your orange if you don't have an orange. I don't mind the orange that comes in the set but I am going to add just a little bit of yellow to it. So this is what the orange looks like with just a little bit of yellow in it. It's not quite the brightness that I want it to be. So I'm going to add more yellow to it. All right, once you get the orange where you want it to be, this is what mine looks like. All right, now this is the step where I'm going to show you how to create some of these highlights. And the highlights are going to be on this front side. So we want to use this orange color to paint the entire pumpkin in. And then we're going to add some of these highlights as we get to this section. So we're going to start just up along the top and then come around these sides. I'm going to actually start on the right side and then come and move into the left. And my paintbrush is totally loaded up with paint so I can cover a lot of this area. Make sure you don't paint an area twice. You don't want to scrub your paper. All right, now once I get into this section, I actually can see some highlights. So what I'm going to do is paint around the edges, bring it up from the bottom. And then once I get to this area right here with my highlights, I'm just rinsing my brush off, blotting it off, and then I'm just kind of coming around these edges and smoothing it out. And then I'm going to do something different in this section just so you can see what it would look like in this other method, I guess, of adding highlights. So I painted in most of it and then I'm rinsing my brush off, but this time what I'm going to do is fan my brush out and then I'm going to touch the top of this so I can pick up some of that paint and then just brush through it. So that gives me a different texture. I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see it rather than this kind of round look. So I'm actually just gonna bring some of these lines. I want these to look a little similar. So there's two ways to add those highlights and then I need some highlights over here and I'm going to do the same thing for this section that I just did. So remember, just rinse your brush off, blot it off on your paper towel, smash it, and then just pull it through. Your paint has to still be wet to do that technique. Here's another technique for highlights. You have to be really careful with this one though because sometimes it can ruin your paper if you scrub it too much and you overwork it but there's actually a highlight in here that I forgot and this is still wet. So I just dried my brush off and I'm just going to pull it through there and pick up some paint. This is not the best way to do it, but it just shows you, you know, watercolors are a little bit more forgiving, I think, than some people think. So this is called lifting off your paint and you have to be careful when you're doing it not to overwork your paper. All right, while we let that dry, let's go ahead and paint in our stem as long as the paint is dry around it. So the reason you wanna wait for the orange part to be dry to paint the stem is that unless you leave a little white between some dry paper, the color of your stem will bleed into this orange and you probably don't want that to happen. If you do, then it will be great. If you don't want your colors to bleed, make sure that they are dry before you start painting the next section. So let's let this orange layer dry and then we'll work on the stem and then we will start adding our shadows to the pumpkin. Once the area around your stem is dry, you can go ahead and mix up the color for your stem. So you could paint your stem just green, this nice bright saturated green, or you could add a little bit of orange to your green to dull it out a little bit and make it look a little bit more brown. So if you add a little bit of orange to your green, it just gives it like this, I don't know, more of an army green color. And once you get that color, just go ahead and paint your entire stem in. This will be the lighter color and we will paint the darker color after. If you get any little puddles like this, just dry your brush off and you can just lightly soak it up. All right, let's add some shadows to this pumpkin. Sometimes if you add a shadow over an area, and we're going to add shadows by glazing, you can also add the shadows by just leaving them light and painting them in a darker color. There's a few ways to do it. This technique, we are just glazing over the top with a darker color. Now you need to be careful. I'm just gonna show you right here for an example. It's so like if I paint a darker color over this orange right here, right? And I have this sharp line and I'm like, oh, I don't want it to be that sharp you just can kind of lift up the area next to it very carefully with your brush. If you have too much water on your brush, watch what happens. It actually lifts up that paint. 
This has been the most frustrating thing for my subscribers and some of my students when this happens. So you really want to avoid, once you add that glazed layer, you want to just leave it to dry until you add the next one. You can very, very carefully touch the edge with a dryer brush. You don't want to touch it with a wet brush or it's just going to lift up that paint underneath and it will be really frustrating for you because now your shadow has a highlight. So don't overwork it when we add these shadows. That is a big tip for shading and watercolor. Now my orange is gone, so I need to remix it. If you have enough orange in the puddle that you made, go ahead and use it. The same color will add a nice shadow, actually. You can add a little bit of green to it. You could add a little tiny bit of blue. All right, so I've mixed up a color just a little bit darker than the first color that I used. And I'm just going to start on the left side and kind of move across. Now some of you might be tempted to grab this shadow color and just start make these lines with this shadow. But if you really look at this pumpkin and at this thumbnail image, the shadows are usually on one side or the other of this line. So I'm just going to start here and there's just a teeny little shadow along the bottom. So this is a good one to start with. So you see that it's just really little, pretty subtle. It might run just a little bit along this side as well and then I'm rinsing my brush off. Blot it off a ton. You don't wanna lift up that paint underneath. And then you can just lightly go along the edge to smooth that out. And then this shadow starts to catch up with this one, except it is a little bit lighter along the bottom. I don't know, it might be the tables reflecting back on it just a little bit. And so we can see some of these lines in here coming up the pumpkin, but then it gets a little bit bigger right here on the left of this line and then comes down. And you see I've just left a little area at the bottom. I'm gonna rinse my brush off, blot it off. I don't want paint on my brush, but I don't want a ton of water because it will just lift off that paint. And then just one time I'm gonna go along this edge. Just one quick time I'm trying to get those shadows in there. And the reason I'm being so careful is I do not want to lift off that paint. This shadow still stays on the left side of this line right here. And so I'm just going to bring it up just so we can kind of see where it is here. So after you paint in that shadow, rinse your brush off, dry it off on your paper towel. My paper towel is getting really orange. And then just go along these edges one time. So in this area, if I look at mine, this shadow comes up a lot higher and it stays on the left side of this crease. So I'm just gonna start at the top and come down, rinse my brush off, blot it off, and then just one time go along this edge. I can start to see it lifting off my paint and so be really careful. If you do end up lifting the paint up, what I would recommend is just letting it stay there for a minute and we can add another shadow over the top. And then right here, I have the same thing. I have the shading it's just coming up more along the back of this piece. So I'm just lightly going along this edge and it is starting to lift up my paint. So I'm trying to be really careful with this. So then there is a little shadow on the right side of this and it's just like a little piece of an orange slice that's coming in. And add some of these shadows. There's a little one here. And the stem is actually making a pretty big shadow on the top of the pumpkin right here. And then we just have some shading on the top part of this section and a little, a little tiny bit on the back side of this one. Uh, you know, you could add a tiny bit around the stem. Let's leave this for a second and let's work on the stem. So hopefully you still have a little puddle mixed up. If you don't, just go ahead and mix some green with a little bit of orange if you want orange in it. And again, your pumpkin could be totally orange. It could be yellow. I mean, I have this crazy one. Get some paint on your brush. I'm just kind of blotting it off and then I'm just gonna smash my brush again. So I have a little bit more of a textured edge and then I'm just gonna start adding some scratches and dabs to this to give it a little bit of texture. After this dries, we will paint a darker shadow on the right side. And now we need to make a little bit of a darker shadow. You can tell some of these up here aren't quite as dark as they need to be. Some of these in here washed away a little bit of the background. So really we just have two last steps probably on the pumpkin. We'll add the darkest shadows to the orange part, the main part of the pumpkin. We'll add the darker shadows to the stem and then we'll paint our background. And I have to remix my shadow color. Okay, now I do want this to be a little bit darker, so I'm adding green to my orange. So I want it to look like a shadow. So I need to make sure there's plenty of orange in there, plenty of yellow, since those were the main colors that I used. And then the green is just gonna give me more of this darker color. All right, test it out. Make sure that it's darker than the color that you used for this shadow. Make sure that your paint is dry before you do this again, or it will lift up that color underneath and it's gonna be really frustrating for you. It does start kind of over in this area. So I'm just gonna bring a line up here and then it kind of comes over and then we see it here and then we can see it in here. I'm painting it over my highlights that I accidentally created. And you can keep these nice and dark. Again, you can try to fade those edges just a little bit if you want. Let me just put these shadows in really quick before we do that. 
To fade the edges, rinse your brush off, blot it off, and then carefully, it's like I'm painting next to it. I'm not really trying to paint over it because I don't wanna lift off that paint. And I'm just trying to smooth it. I'm not trying to paint a stripe next to it. I'm just trying to even it out a little bit. And you can bring them up a little bit higher if you want to add some more shading on that pumpkin or just kind of leave it as it is. We definitely need the stem shaded right in here where we have the shadow. And any place that it looks a little bit stripy, you can also take a dry brush and kind of brush into it in the opposite direction. If the shadows jump too quickly for you, feel free to just add that color, another layer right over the top. So I could add it in here just to darken up this pumpkin and make it a little bit brighter. I can just add it right on top of that layer. So this is the fun part. This is where you get to add a little bit more color and dimension to your pumpkin. So I'm just bringing these darker colors up a little bit into the lighter areas and when I start painting next to it I don't want to paint over the top of it I'm just painting next to it so I don't pull that color off. And this shadow still is just not quite dark enough so I'm gonna have to just darken this up a little bit more. All right, once you've added the shadows on your pumpkin, go ahead and let's add the shadows to our stem. So I'm going to use just a lot of green and orange and not as much water. And then the shadow is on the right side. So it's really dark right here because this kind of tucks behind this little, there's like a little tiny triangle at the top. And then we get the, these shadows that are in this area here. Let's see, and there's just a little shadow kind of on the back side of this. Rinse your brush off. Just come along the side of it. All right, let's paint our background. This is the easy part. So I already have some orange. If you don't, you can mix them up. We want it to be fairly light. So I'm going to use my big brush, add a lot of water to my puddle, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of green to this. This needs to be a fairly big puddle because we are going to be painting this whole light area in and this shadow, if you can still see it. So you can make this more green, you can make this more orange, you could paint this black. You don't even have to have a background. You could just use this color to paint in a shadow if you'd like, but I'm just painting in like this nice, tan background and you can lift your paper up if you want to make this more flat if you taped a border make sure your tape is sealed and then go ahead and just paint over that i try not to go over areas twice you can leave a little white between your background and the object that you painted or you can try to get as close as you can wait for the background to dry before you paint in the shadow while you're waiting for it to dry you can add a few more details on your pumpkin if you want to add a few more shadows in here or shadows to the stem this is a great time to do it and then you just want to paint in that shadow so my shadow comes out just a little bit further than my pumpkin right here i'm just going to come along the bottom and this side and you can make it a little bit darker. You can use the same technique before where you kind of smooth out the edges or you can just keep that a nice sharp shadow. Just remember if you're painting paint next to it, not over it, it's just gonna lift it up and make it white. Now wait for it to dry and then take your tape off. After you remove the tape, you can sign it, you can frame it, you can give it to someone. You could paint a face on it. It's really up to you what you decide to do. I hope you learned how to add shadows and also how to add highlights to your watercolor paintings. Now that you know how to do this, what I would do is really go find a pumpkin or a vegetable or a fruit, get some nice lighting, set it by a window so that you have some good shadows and some highlights and try to paint it. Try to add those highlights, try to add those shadows and work through it using these techniques. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you have a wonderful day.